Hello again from Bees on Main here in beautiful downtown Stoughton, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm here with Amanda Stoltz, our, uh, our, our awesome lead programmer, uh, who's been working with us for uh, now about four, four years at least, I think. Um, and uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, the Bees app that's coming out and that and what she's been doing with it. But uh, first, the first question is, Amanda, uh, how are your bees? Tell, tell us about your bees. <laughs> my bees, um, I just started keeping bees with my friend, Lisa, who has kept bees before, although I think not for a few years now. Um, and we set up two hives in her neighborhood at a friend's house. And they have been, they're doing fine. It's slow so far. We do have some brood and some new bees, but it's only been about six weeks. So I'm hoping things will start picking up soon. Yeah, I have my nieces and nephew coming out to take a look this afternoon. That would so, be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so you've been working on what we're calling the Bees app now for over six months. Uh, it's a major, it's a major overhaul of uh, our our uh, app system that goes on the phones, the Android and the iPhones. Uh, why don't you you tell us a little bit about uh, how you and Lorenzo started and and uh, you know what the goals were. Yeah, so we've been talking about making a new app for <laughs> years now, since yes. we finished the old app. Um, so it's been nice to get started. So the, the larger goals of this whole thing are, are what? Um, so we wanted the app to function a little more closely to the website, um, to look more like that and make it easier to use and to understand. And we wanted to add being able to do device configuration, because in our old app you can't move anything or set up new hives or apiaries. Um, and additionally, we needed to make it work offline a lot more cleanly. So you could be in a remote apiary and still collect your data and see it and upload. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of good uh, feedback from the users over the years. And also people like Teo, who, you know, he's got 50 devices in his apiary. And Lorenzo has been working with a lot of people in Europe. And so, you know, we're trying to really take all that and, and make it simple, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is really hard. Yeah. Yes, um, and it's looking great, I'll say, so far. Thanks. Um, Lorenzo and I started making just like larger picture wireframes, um, so just like mock-ups of what an app could be. And we started with, I think I made the first like main screens, and then Lorenzo would go through, and he has a much better eye than me, and tell me what made sense or what was confusing or what we were missing, and we would just go back and forth changing the design on those or flipping things up. And then we had a lot of uh, good help also. Uh, University of Washington mm -hmm. looked at some of this stuff, uh, a group out there that we've been working with, and uh, got to a pretty good place where things... They could be more specific, like your buttons aren't big enough, or right. like why do you have this text when no one's going to read it, and things like that. Um, so the wireless part has been really tough from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like it's a lot better in this uh, device, in this app. Yes, yeah, so to connect with Bluetooth, um, we use an open source library that other people contribute to. Um, and we are pulling that into our app. And I've like wrapped it to do more error handling. But just the scanning seems quicker, devices come up better, and the connections are a lot more stable. That's great. Uh, and then the other big part is, of course, the database and keeping all these different uh, sets of data and from different people and different hubs and apps and all that mm -hmm. correct. Uh, so you worked on that separately also? Yeah, um, so it's just making sure that we're saving things locally in our database and then transferring it up. So there were more pieces of that, like I'll save it locally and make an attempt to upload it to our database. Mm -hmm. um, but if I can't, it's there. And then the next time you open the app, it'll try. Or if it gets a notification that you're online now when you weren't, It'll try and sync your data. Then the other cool thing is it's going to support the subhub. Yeah, so we have our new subhub device that's collecting the data itself in the apiary, but not uploading any of it. And with this, we can read that log pretty quickly. Even with a very full log we've tested here, it's still just like two minutes, maybe. Yeah, for um, 50 months worth of data. Yeah, so we've made, you can read that and see the data, the devices that you've pulled in, and then choose if you want to save it and try and upload it, or if you want to skip that device altogether. Um, so now we're in the, the final testing. We've been using it uh, on our team for the last month or so. 
um, and are now in alpha mode. Starting beta next week, yeah. um, that's when we really start <laughs> getting so when I get feet. nervous <laughs> yeah, well it's a it's a tough thing and and we appreciate everybody's uh you know participation and and patience um uh, but uh do you have any particular particular goals I don't know I just like to hear the feedback because everyone uses it differently and no one's used this app much at all so it'll be interesting to see what we've hit the mark on and what we need to fix. Okay, so from the very beginning, we've wanted the user experience to be really good, uh, and we've worked hard at at doing this. Uh, we want it so that my mom can use it. So you know, why don't you talk a little bit about the user experience, the UX, and uh, you know what what we've done to you know hopefully make that better, even better this time. So we try to like split the functionality a little bit. So on the bottom of your screen is a navigation and you can see devices or apiaries separately. So if you're doing more configuring devices or troubleshooting a Bluetooth connection, you can be on that page to see what's going on with the actual sensors. And then we have the apiaries, which more similar to the website shows you the apiary and the hive and you can see the devices to see just a quick view of the temperature at your hive when you're standing out in the field and that kind of thing. Um, and you can sync directly from that and just see that you've gotten all the data that you need to do while you're out. So that the apiaries view is the more typical once you're configured. Yeah, if you're all set know. up and doing like a normal hive, look at your hive and mm -hmm. that an inspection. And like the Apiary app, you can push one button and it'll sync everything automatically. Yep, and we have actually added with this app, we're able to connect to up to three Bluetooth devices at once. So hopefully you can collect your data a lot more quickly that Even way. Even if you don't have the SubHub. Right, yep. Uh, and uh, we've also added a, a notes function. Uh, so we should be able to do that uh, quite easily from uh, the Apiary view and you know, trying to just trying to make the whole process uh, easier and yeah. less button pushing and less annoying things you have to do. Always. Always. Okay. Well, it's really awesome, uh, Amanda and the whole team, uh, but in particular, Lorenzo and Amanda have worked really hard on this to, uh, you know, really elevate our game. Uh, it's. Uh, always risky coming out with new apps. Uh, we hope everybody helps us, you know, plug the little holes that are there. But uh, we really think you'll like it, and I uh, really want to congratulate you on doing a, a fine job. Thank so, you. So far. Yeah, I can't wait for everyone to try it and to hear some feedback. Okay. Well, that, that's it for this week, and uh, we'll do this again next week. I uh, hope you tune in. Uh, we'll do some other Hive hive-related uh, broadcast. And uh, until then, remember, every hive counts.